As the grow room fills up, we're going to start tomatoes today. That coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sue's, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit SueGrowingSupply.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit ManureTea.com. Rain Reserve. Reserving your rain, preserving our future. Rain Reserve, manufacturing of rainwater capturing capabilities. Visit rainreserve.com and use coupon code RAIN2016 to save 10% on your total purchase. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joey Baird. One thing that many of us gardeners are excited about and know spring and summer is very near is when we start tomatoes indoors. Now, you don't have to start tomatoes indoors. Yes, you can go purchase the starts at your local garden center, independent garden center, big box store. But keep in mind, those varieties, there's a limited amount of varieties that they're going to have versus what you could start indoors at your house. Now, also, when you see the tomatoes at the store, at the big box store, at your local garden center, that doesn't mean you can bring them home that day and plant them. They always get them early to entice you to buy them. Then, you know, you've got to hold on to them. So keep that in mind if you're just going to go buy starts. Just because they have them, that doesn't mean it's time to put them in the ground. You, let's, so let's, start talk, let's talk about starting tomatoes from seed. We've got 24 different varieties of tomatoes that we're going to start in seed. Now, we, we've done it many different ways. We've used the little pea pots here and we've also used the, the party cups and we put one or two seeds in each cup and then we've moved them and, and done the transplant to a different container. <clears throat> one thing that we're going to do and we've done this a couple of years and it's worked very well is we will take let's see this is a yellow brandy wine so we're gonna we will take five or six seeds and put in this container. You can see this container is about half full. The reason being is we're going to plant five or six tomatoes in this container. They'll take seven to ten days to germinate. Then once they get to two or three inches high, then I will take them out of this container and move them into their permanent home until they go in the garden. We're using root makers. These are the larger containers. These actually set in a removable frame and these are designed to air prune the roots. Every time a root system hits the uh, air pocket, it puts more roots on. Uh, so it worked very well last year, and we had very good root development, and it prevents the plant from, if you're in a, a cup or one of these containers, from the roots wrapping around and then at the time of planting you try to unwrap the roots, you know, tease the roots with the root maker. You don't have to, you just plop it out, put it right in the ground uh, deeper than, you know, how we plant tomatoes and we'll get into that. So that's how we're going to do it. And, you know, you can do it in any way, shape or form. <clears throat> One thing we don't care much for these peat pots is because they are a peat based material. Nothing wrong with peat based. It's controversial based on if you believe that the, the peat bogs are being depleted. The thing that we don't like is we have to remove this netting when it goes in the ground. These do not have no nutrient value whatsoever. They're just a medium for the seed to start and then you have to fertilize them at, at, with a liquid fertilizer of some sort or another. 
when we plant them in soil, the nice thing about the, the Sioux compost products that we're using, they all have a slow reverse, re, release fertilizer. In addition, they have a certified leaf compost mixture in the potting soil, the rice hull potting soil, all the, all the different products that they have. So once the plants, we put them in the root maker here, they've got nutrients in the soil that will sustain them until we put them in the ground. You'll want to start tomatoes six to eight weeks before your last average frost day. This also falls in line with eggplant too. So if you're going to start eggplants, you want to do it, the, you know, you want to start them the same time as you do the tomatoes. Now, Again, we've got 24 varieties and we'll just real, I'll go over one and show how we'll do it here. So let's pick, let's pick the yellow brandy wine. It just happened to be in a yellow cup, uh, just the way it worked out. So all I'm going to do here is get five, six seeds, or two, four, that'll work, that's six. And I'm just going to broadcast them spacingly, I'm not going to try to put them all in one space because when I divide these out, uh, they're going to, I want kind of the root mass to be separate and I'm not pulling roots. Now you can just go ahead and put soil, a nice dusting of potting soil on top of that, water it in in five, seven, ten days, they'll be up and, and we can move them around in about two weeks. One thing that we're going to use here, and just because we have it available, because we used it a couple years ago, is vermiculite. Vermiculite, perlite, very similar in the actions that they perform in potting soil. That's the white particles you see that look like styrofoam. They're not styrofoam. Don't use styrofoam in your potting soil if you're making it. It doesn't work. Vermiculite, perlite are minerals that have been treated with heat and they absorb moisture and they uh, uh, allow aeration to occur in the soil. Now some people will use vermiculite and perlite in their actual ground garden if they have a very dense clay material base. Now that's something that you would have to do research on if you feel that's something that you would like to do in your garden. The reason why we choose to use it, one is because I'm tired of this jug sitting around and I want to get rid of it. Secondly is we'll put a night, we'll put a very We'll put a, a quarter inch coating on top of the seeds, we'll water it in. It will act as a moisture barrier and uh, prevent those that soil from drying out. Now you could do the same practice on your peppers, your tomatoes, we're doing on tomatoes, any seed starting you want. Just to, uh, just keep in mind, there is, this does cost money. So the best recommendation I would have is if I didn't have this, I would simply just water this put soil on top and water just like I would if I was planting direct sowing in the garden with a bean or uh, a parsnip or a carrot seed, whatever the case is. So we've got that, uh, we've got that there, we've planted the seed, so all I'm going to do is just take a, a, just a handful here, cover the soil, and the other advantage to this vermiculite or perlite, it's very light, so it will assist uh, allow the tomato to emerge out of the soil very easily compared to if you had soil on top. Now, if you were doing this inside, like I talked about, we'd be using potting soil. So it would be a very light material that the seed would have to try to penetrate through versus if you had soil that you were, you were planting outside and you're direct sowing. So that's how that goes. Now I'm going to get the rest of these planted and we'll talk about some of the maintenance and care that we need to perform to help these tomato plants Reach, mature, reach the height we need indoors so then we can take them out outside and get a harvest with our work that we've put into them inside getting them started. All right, so I've got them all planted, almost used up all the vermiculite. We can put that in a bag instead of a, a tub there. Uh, one other thing when doing tomatoes, and this may be something you're already doing or maybe something new to you, when we're doing tomatoes, we keep all our tomatoes in a bag here. We have our other seeds in our seed keeper that's apple, uh, alphabetized, but it's just easier to grab this every year going all our tomatoes are here and we can plant accordingly. So again, I've got them all in, coated with vermiculite on top. We're going to water them in and then in about seven to ten days we're going to start seeing them uh, emerge through the uh, vermiculite, perlite, uh, potting soil, whatever you're going to use to top dress these with. Then in about th two to three weeks, whenever they're you know, three, three and a half, two to three inches tall, we will pull them out and plant them again, like I spoke about in the root makers, 
and have their own individual home. Now, each one of these contains six, seven, eight seats. I didn't meticulously go five, five, five. I just kind of pinched and I saw there's at least five. I went ahead and gone with it, which gives me the option of when these things start to germinate and we start moving them into their own individual growth cell, if there are weak ones, I'm going to get rid of them because we have the space and we have excess tomatoes here that we can be very uh, picky about which ones we get. If there's one that looks kind of dredge or, or, or you know, weak, we're going to get rid of it because we don't want to put that in the garden and then fight with it all year just to get two or three tomatoes when we can put healthy ones in the garden and they can give us 15 to 40 pounds of tomatoes based on the variety and how we take care of it. Now let's talk about once these things start to germinate. We don't have to put these under grow lights right now or ambient outdoor light. We don't have to do any of that until they start emerging. Then we want to put them underneath a grow light or by a window. Now we have done this many times without grow lights. Grow lights are uh, an investment. They're not required to garden indoors to start seed. We use this unit behind me for a number of years without the grow lights. We just rotate the plants as the sun set in the evening. This is a west facing window. So we just let the, uh, the plants reach for the light and plant tomatoes can get leggy and you can plant uh, them deeper. Again, another thing you want to be aware of, as you can see on that one there, that leaf there is a white spot. This got too close to the grow lights and actually burnt the, 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 the plant. So you want to keep that in mind too. You want to keep the light inch, two inches above the plant if you can, if you're using grow lights again, or if you're putting it by a window, that's perfectly fine. You, it, you want to put these out in the ground after your last average frost date when there's no chance, you know, don't decide that next Thursday is the frost date and I'm going to put them in next Friday morning. That's not going to work because that's the last average frost date over the last 10 years. To find your last average frost date, go to your favorite search engine and type in last average frost date, insert your zip code, or you can get a hold of your local university extension office. They can provide that information, but it's an average over the last 10 years. So if it says next Thursday, your last average frost date, you potentially could have frost a week after that. To make it simple, you want to put these in the ground when the soil temperature at root zone is a consistent 55 degrees at the root zone, not ambient temperature because it's the root zone I'm going three inches to five inches deep and I'm putting a digital thermometer seeing what that temperature is and if it's consistently you know if it's not going to get any colder than 55 degrees at night I'm going to put them in the ground because you don't want to shock these tomatoes you're just pushing your harvest date back because you put them in it shocks them and, and it takes time to re recoup that that shockness. Also, you want to harden these off by taking them out for a certain amount of time over a week period, bringing them in so they don't get sun scarred or sun burned on the leaves and that will put them in shock and they'll drop their leaves and it's a whole process there. We'll talk more about that later, but getting your tomatoes started six to eight weeks before your last average frost date is, a, is an exciting time in a gardener's year because you know it's about time to actually get out in the garden and start planting. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.